Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and they were gathered at Soko, which belongs to Judah. The Philistines are the problem, the obstacle, the enemy that will not go away. And notice in verse 1, they're occupying the land that belongs to Judah. They're keeping Judah from the life that, that God wants them to have. And I wrote down in my quiet time notebook a few months ago, and I was reading this story, and I said, in life there are always Philistines. Yes? When you follow Christ, there is this life that Jesus wants you to have. Jesus wants to take your life from where it is now and move it over here where you will experience more peace, more joy, more love than you've known before. And th this isn't just flowery language. Jesus said it. My peace I give to you, he said in John 14. And in John 15, he said, these things I've spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete, full. But there are Philistines in our way, problems, obstacles, people, sins that keep us from what belongs to us in Christ. It's ours. He would give it to us. But this is standing in the way. Verse 2. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered and encamped in the valley of Elah, and they drew up in a line of battle against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side with a valley between them. And we'll find out in verse 16 that these two armies remained locked in place like this for the next 40 days, locked in a stalemite. And I found myself thinking as I read this, you know, this is not all that different from what happens to us in life, where we get stuck in place. It can happen in hundreds of different ways. We can get stuck in a sin. We, we give in to a temptation. And, want, and at once we repent, but a short time later, what often happens? The temptation what? There it is, knocking at the door again. And this time, because we gave way to it the, the first time, it now becomes easier to yield to it the second time. And so we give way, never realizing that a chain of habit or addiction is beginning to wrap itself around our hearts, link by link. Jesus said, he who sins becomes a slave to sin. That's how sin works. That's how evil works within us. And before we know it, we're stuck. A person can also get stuck in an emotion. Nod your head if you know what I mean. We experience a loss, a disappointment, a setback, and, and we grieve. And, and we ought to. We're human. It's, it's the right thing to do. But you've got to be careful that you don't get stuck in that place where grief morphs into a darkness that never goes away and sucks you downward into a very living hell. I've met people like this, and every day is worse than the one before. No matter what losses we suffer, we need to, with the grace God gives us, try to live again. We can't stay stuck in grief. Another emotion that we get stuck in is fear. Nod your head, have you, you ever experienced that? We experience a jolt to our psyche, a job loss or a car accident. It does a number on it. We fail at something that we've poured a lot of energy into, and it imprints on us. I remember in the days after 9-11, we had been bombarded for so many days afterwards with images of the planes going into the buildings, just just every day filled the TV, that when they, that when they reestablished plane travel and a plane flew overhead, I jumped. And I said to myself, or Janice, I said, I wonder, is that what PTSD is? A chronic response to a trauma that's just repeated again and again. And you become emotionally disabled by it. And pretty soon, you're stuck. And fear literally rules your life. So here in the story, Israel is stuck. And it's at this point of the story when we meet Goliath. And that's the thing about the Goliaths in our lives. Nod your head if you agree with this. The things that hurt us, that bring us down, that hold us in place, don't go away unless we face them. Hmm? Until you make a stand against it, whatever it is, it'll keep coming back for more. 